welcome to PodCamp Pittsburgh, everybody, uh, and Podcasting 101. Is anyone from out of town? Yeah. Well, welcome to our city. Welcome to Pittsburgh. Thanks. My name is Hutch Bailey, and I do the Bird's Eye View show, the Bird's Eye View podcast. And I'm at Bird's Eye View on Twitter. Just a little disclaimer, I'm not a social media expert or a technical expert like these guys. I'm just a relatively successful podcaster, and I'm going to get to why I said that in a minute. Okay. Bear with me a little bit here. I'm trying to get my bearings. <laughs> Speaking of social media experts, I want to introduce probably Pittsburgh's premier, definitely Pittsburgh's premier wrestling podcast. I got a couple guys here, Sword and Will from the Wrestling Mayhem show. Yes. Get some uh, opening comments about your show, maybe, and, and then we'll drive on. Well, I guess a little history and background of what we do, um, and then we'll get into a little bit of yours, too. Uh, we have been doing this for coming on four years in January. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in our next session uh, over in the Hub and Grassroots Podcasting. Um, but uh, we, and we'll get into, we just kind of got together, wanted to start talking about wrestling. So I was a uh, venue and podcasting four years ago, and we're still here. Um, and, you know, just had something we were passionate about, and we went with it. Um, we've uh, uh, interviewed some pretty big names. We just did Jimmy Snuka a couple weeks ago. Uh, at one point, we were doing uh, members of the American Gladiators when they were on NBC like a year ago. We had uh, like three of those. We had two of them. We had Toa and we had yeah. Zinn, that was part of the second wave of cast. Uh, we, we're very involved in the local independent wrestling scene. We get a lot of guys there that have been on WWE, guys that have been formerly on WWE and now on TNA, uh, a couple guys from TNA actively. Um, TNA, TNA being another wrestling product that's <coughs> on TV, just lesser known than WWE. Yeah, so that's our experience. Okay, just a couple questions before we get started. Has anybody never downloaded or listened to a podcast? Okay, we hope to change that today. Uh, who in here wants to plan or start a podcast? Awesome. Outstanding, that's great. Who has their own podcast in the room? Great, what's your... Uh, <coughs> it's called Sister Shout, the so, lesbian podcast. Okay. Five episodes. Great. You're just starting or... Absolutely. Good, great. Where's the other one? Uh, it's called Comic Book Pit. Uh, it's about comic books and it's going on here. Great. Great. I'm adding him. Yeah. <laughs> if you have any questions. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's like wrestling. If you end up having any questions uh, at any time, feel free to raise your hand or get throw something at me or throw something at one of these guys and we'll uh, do what we can. Uh, we we're used to getting stuff done. Yeah, <laughs> Has anybody ever listened to my show, The Bird's Eye View? Oh. What about the Wrestling Mayhem show? Okay, let me tell you a little bit about my show. I uh, My show is about all things Pittsburgh and beyond. I've been uh, on steady for three years. My third anniversary is actually next week, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it started out being a show, uh, a little bit more background. I grew up in Pittsburgh in 1980 when the steel mills went down. I had to go somewhere else to provide for myself. So I moved to central Pennsylvania and I ended up staying there. I actually went in the army and then I went to central Pennsylvania and I stayed there for like 17 years. It took me like 20 years to get home. So my show started out being with my son, uh, who was at the time, was in, he was a high school football player at North Catholic High School. And we kind of chronicled his football career, but then it, it started taking a little bit and I started thinking about when I was living out in Lebanon County, how I really missed the Berg and missed Yenzer type stuff and, and things like that. So I started making my show's theme a show for people that are living in exile, that are living in other places. And I have listeners all over the world and all over the country, so that's uh, that's really cool. But that's basically uh, how my show went. But then, uh, and I have many guests. It started out being my son and I, but he's now in college playing football for a losing team. <laughs> but he's playing. 
And uh, I have all kinds of guests. There's a lot of people here that have been on my show that are uh, at PodCamp Pittsburgh. These guys have been on my show. Josh has been on the show quite a few times. That's my wingman back there. He's been a title to your show. So yeah, he has. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Uh, but in, uh, I'm in the Army Reserve, have been for a long time. And in 2007, I got orders to go to Iraq. And I had to decide. It was right when I was starting to, you know, the show was really kicking. And, I, you know, if I drop this, I'm going to lose listeners. So I took the show with me. And I did episodes like 19 to, I'll, I'll get into that later, but I think it was 19 to 40 are either overseas or training before I went overseas or drunken episodes when I came back from R&R. &R. So that, that's uh, not that's different than any other show, any other episode. Uh, so I got home in July 2008. By October, the show was in decline. This is the catchphrase, this is the important part. I blew off PodCamp 1. I was in Iraq for PodCamp 2. PodCamp Pittsburgh 3 was in October when my show was crashing and I almost blew it off, but I didn't. I came here. And who here does not use Twitter? Everybody, if you don't use Twitter, I highly encourage you this weekend to talk to somebody. Almost everybody around can, can let you know what you need to do. But the reason I say that is because, and also follow people that you meet here. Uh, it really changed my show, Twitter and PodCamp. Changed my show, and I don't want to get too deep, but it kind of changed my life too. And, and the reason I say that is, I mean, it didn't change me, but some of the things that happened, my show has a new life. And I, uh, my wife and I, who's also, she's Berg's eye wife on Twitter, uh, we personally socialize with at least 50 people that came from that pod camp. I mean, they might not have been at pod camp, but I mean, these people have all been over to my house. I've been over to their house. I've been to his mom's. I mean, and I didn't know them. I didn't know them last year. You know, and it, it's all for a wedding. For a wedding. <laughs> I fell into that one. Uh, actually, I and I. I started a WordPress blog to support my show, and uh, actually my 100th gallon of beer is now fermenting in the home brewery right adjacent to my studio, and that happened from linking up with the guys that are going to do the grassroots podcasting session next in the hub, should I drink that.com. So that all happened because I got on Twitter and... Uh, and whatever. I'm also the proud owner of a great kangaroo personal liquor filter. <laughs> All directly related. All right. Uh, any comments before we get started, guys? No, I think. Okay. Again. Okay. Here's the goal. This is what we want to do. We want to familiarize you people with all the basic requirements that you need to sustain an audio or video podcast. That's pretty straightforward. We're looking for a little bit of interaction too, so we uh, I only have five minutes of material, so we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what is a podcast and where can I find it? Podcast is an online radio or television show that can be found for free on iTunes, Libsyn, Podcast Pickle. And okay, it's right a lot of other ones, uh, I think Zoom has their own uh, there's, venue for it. Yeah, there's all I, I, when I was starting, I was like, okay, I don't know if iTunes is going to be the big thing forever. I literally found a list of hundreds of things like podcast, pit, pickle, pot feed. Like there, and I don't even know what my feed is attached to anymore because I signed up to so many of them three years ago. So, yes, question. Is there a tool to register to several feeds at once? You know, last year I was introduced to something called Video Mobile, which if you're doing a video podcast, it is unbelievable because they'll put you up to YouTube and everything, uh, and, and like Blip and whatever other video service like it that would fit for it. Uh, come on, get it. Come on, guys. Uh, find a spot. Here. Here, get the stool. We'll make this work. It's all right. We'll make this work. Thank you. Um, where were we? Uh, oh, video mobile. Um, and I asked, I was like, is there anything for, uh, for this uh, for podcasting? And the answer was nobody, not that anybody's aware of. 
So yeah, you're going to have to be manually. I would say start with iTunes, start with the Zoom store where you know the, that's, those are the easiest ways and most people, like, you know, how many people hear about iPhones, iPods, you know, at this event? It's, <laughs> um, Even a Google search. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you put podcast in the search field and, and whatever you're interested <laughs> in after it, you'll definitely have a ton of podcasts. There's so many podcasts out there. Not very many successful ones, so I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. And there's a key, there's another thing to balance, and we'll get into this with, with hosting, is uh, uh, you know, depending on how you want to control your content, are you simply interested in getting it to the most people possible, or do you want to have more control and try to funnel those people towards one venue, like an iTunes or something, but we'll get a little bit of that in hosting. Now the thing about iTunes, iTunes, they, they list most podcasts and downloads, most of them are free. Uh, it automatically downloads new podcasts when they're posted. Listeners can comment on your podcast. There's a lot of advantages. Uh, for, as for me, a quarter of my listeners get it from iTunes. And I just wanted to read something. I don't know if this gentleman's here or not, but he's from Wizard Media. Rob, Wal Rob Walsh, Vice President of Podcaster Relations at Wizard Media. There are 100 million registered iTunes users, and there are 50 million iPhones and iPod touches said Walsh. 85 to 90 percent of all podcast download are via iTunes according to Libsyn's metrics. That means almost all the podcasts available are being downloaded via iTunes and half of the registered users, meaning they've made a purchase with a credit card on iTunes, own an iPhone and iPod Touch. Simply put, the iTunes, iPod, iPhone platform is predominant in the world of podcasts. Yeah, but that's not not everybody's. Uh, yeah, I think that, that that report kind of makes you think that a lot of people are listening on the iPhones, iPods, and everything. I, for one, I, I listen through my iTunes at work, at home while I'm working is a big thing for me. Um, and there's a lot of lot of other venues uh, uh, for that. Like you know, we have a player on our on our on our site. So I mean, there there it's not not everybody is going to be on iPod. You know, just keep that in mind. I guess my main point uh, for saying that was if you do start a podcast, at least make sure it's listed on iTunes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, and the other thing is, before you just go out and start a podcast, listen around. You know, go on these different places and listen to different podcasts, especially with the venue that, you know, whatever idea that you're thinking about doing a podcast on, try to listen to podcasts that are the same type, so you don't, well, I mean, you can listen to a podcast, and then you can tailor your own to how you want to. What's a good, good to see what's out there, uh, I've been a big fan of Between the Ropes, which is actually a radio show in Orlando, but they also podcast their show. Uh, there's a few others, I think Rap, WrestleCrap.com has one. Uh, uh, figure Four. Figure Four Weekly has, uh, has one of the bigger ones. And so. I still bounce around and check out other podcasts and see what other wrestling podcasts are doing. And I'm an avid listener of tech, tech podcasts like <coughs> Week in Tech, Weekly Report, a lot of stuff on Revision 3, a lot of the CNET stuff. Because um, that's just a lot of my interest. But I, I take a lot of seeing what people do and try to apply it to my own content. The way I did that is I listened to a couple Pittsburgh broadcasts, or podcasts rather, and I wanted, I, I listened to, the, to one and it had really phony Pittsburgh user accents. You know, you could tell the people didn't talk like that when they were talking in, in real life. So I wanted to make sure I didn't do that on my show. So if you ever go on my show, you're getting real Yenzers. <laughs> you're getting real straight out of the box. That's the way they talk Yenzers. We goof around a little bit, but these guys did the whole show like that. I listened for five minutes and it was out. Uh, some other ways that you can uh, get podcasts, you can, any podcast website that you go to, it, it's, it's good to listen to them on different, uh, different syndicators and things like that, whatever they're called, I think they're called syndicators. The uh, Libsyn or whatever. A host. I, host. I, I, I refer to them as hosting, host. but they can be called syndicators. That's why I brought these guys, man. <laughs> but uh, you can also, it's good to go to their sites too, and uh, almost all of them have a feed button that you can hit. You can subscribe right to their show. Uh, you can do the same thing in Google Reader. Uh, a lot of them now, you can follow them on Facebook and Twitter, which is really nice because, like for instance, when the guys have a show or they'll send a message out to everybody on their on their uh, friends list or whatever, and it uh, 
lets you know that there's a show up. You know, you don't have to go back and check necessarily. When you're right on Facebook, you can do that Twitter too. Actually, uh, Twitter boosted my listenership up quite a bit because I do that. I put something out on Facebook and Twitter when there's a new show up. Uh, now, like I said before, the most podcasts now are free, but the industry is kind of starting to monetize a little bit. I don't think that's so for like shows like ours. Yeah. But there's a lot of other well, the, the professional. One the one I mentioned before, Between the Ropes, does that they have their online radio show, which of course is free to you know for download and listen to. But they also have a subscription model. A lot of people experiment with this as well. They even whether this is a good model, whether everybody's actually making real money at it. Uh, but I mean, something like that. They have their free. Uh, content and then uh, uh, they have several interviews and discussions that there are part of their monthly subscription. It was like maybe four bucks a month. Uh, I think maybe the Figure Four Wrestling Observer ones have. I, I know I've seen links on there for for free and pro versions of their podcasts. That that that's true. They'll have uh, I think like once a month a free one, and then um, but generally it's a it's a it's teaser play kind of deal. Teaser. And there's some people uh, like I know when Dig Nation first started off, I was familiar with the Kevin Rose Big uh, Revision Three, and when they started, I think they had a paid uh, model that if you paid, you got a day of when they released it. If you didn't, um, you got maybe the next Monday or something like maybe three four days later. So like a delay system that worked out. Do your shows generate income for you guys, or do they not? We're, I think we're all looking into. <laughs> I have a, a button on my site where I sell, uh, I don't sell them, but I connect the listener to a site that sells gray kangaroo liquor filters. I haven't had a whole lot of success with it yet. I'm not really looking for that at this point. I know a lot of people are, and I think that's most absolutely the next step in this media. Uh, but my podcast is a deficit podcast. <laughs> I think all of there are a lot of people here. Will you know, be, yeah. And I'm, I'm really not looking to make any money. It's, it's a hobby. It's something that I love to do, uh, which is something that will help you if you really have passion for what you're doing. And that's the thing I think with ours, we are we are doing it because we do love it. But we didn't like what we were doing every week, every Tuesday. We're in that studio doing it for for our show, and it'd be nice to make money, so it would be a little easier to do that. True. Update the equipment a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, until you, you conquer these other things and get that critical mass, it's not really attainable because if you're looking for advertisers, trying to shop around for that, which I, I think there will be other uh, sessions talking about that, um, you're, you're just not going to have anything people are going to want until you get, like, you know, maybe a few thousand uh, listeners. Uh, but the really important thing is, uh, is the niche, which we'll talk about a little bit here. So, yeah. Uh, just to wrap this. Oh, he has a question. Oh, sorry. You described the show as successful. How do you measure this? I said relatively successful, and in the next uh, couple <laughs> slides, I'm going I'm to cover that. I'd actually cover it. I'm still around, and yeah, and that's part of it. If you look more engaged, if you do a search for podcasts on one of these hosts for your subject or whatever, like if you put Pittsburgh podcasters in, it'll list 50 different shows. You got to look at when the last content was updated. Because out of those 50 shows, there's probably five of us that are still doing a podcast. A lot of people get in there and they start, they don't really think it out too much. And I didn't really think it out either, but I continuously kept thinking about it to keep it alive. So I had, I have 72 episodes. They have 250 or something. Well, we have, we're coming up on 189. Okay. Yeah. That's right. I was on 187. Also, uh, success is, it's really subjective. We did a panel uh, at PodCamp last year, What is Success? And whether it's uh, high ratings, whether you're making money off of it, whether it's just something that you enjoy, it just depends from person to person. A uh, question for you. Have you done any experimenting with putting either before or after or somewhere an insert, you know, a quick message? I don't mean uh, bludgeon you with commercials, but for something that's useful for people that you may or may not have a monetizing link. I do public uh, service now. We, for, kind of for fun and kind of to test our, our maybe advertising, critiquing skills, we had a, 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 an ongoing thing where we would find interesting energy drinks and uh, kind of review them on the show and sometimes not be so nice. It's more for entertainment purposes. But we, could, but we were kind of hoping and we we're like, hey, Venom Energy Drink, we actually kind of like you. Can you send us money? Uh, yeah, more for fun, but kind of still kind of getting that advertising chops going. Um, other than that, I mean, we, I mean, we talk about a lot of the product that just connects with our, our, our audience. Like, 
like the DVDs and everything. Uh, where I'm actually working with uh, somebody that we're going to try and get a regular DVD review on the website. And, and then as far as monetization, you can get into something like an Amazon, uh, not Prime, Premium Partners, something like that. But it's their kind of affiliate system, and you can uh, connect links and you know maybe get a, a kickback for people going through your link to uh, to to purchase the DVD that you're recommending or books or whatever. Um, you have one of them, then you have Yeah, yeah. Right, it's real simplistic, but how do you tell how many people are listening to you? Uh, we'll get into that with Kosta yeah. actually here. Maybe, that. That, maybe the next slide. You were quick. Um, how do you think paying for it? Do you think that really declines your views because? Personally, yes. I think when you start, my personal opinion, is my opinion, uh, is you, again, if we're talking about critical mass, you want to get as many people looking at you as possible, and free is a big word as far as that goes. Um, now, there's also a lot of debate if you're like, if you say, I want to you know, support this with advertising, um, you know, working that in there that doesn't anger the audience, like making it, or bless you. Um, making it so so it fits with your content because if people do get into you and people do get devoted to the content you're putting out and, and start you know trusting you as somebody on the subject, um, like if you look at this week in tech, they say we only get advertisers with products that we use um, and believe in, and you know they they're not and, and they they typically won't get somebody like Apple because they a lot they talk a lot about Apple. They'll dig it and they'll support it. They go both ways with it. And they don't want to feel um, uh, swayed by it, you know. Like uh, if we got like hang, like something like a great kangaroo. Like we're all for our audiences. For us, should I drink that? For bird's eye view, we all like to drink. And if it's our audience, and we're like this thing's awesome. We've actually had should I drink that on our show, demonstrating it on the show with some crappy vodka I bought for six bucks, and and it fits. Uh, any any other questions first? Yes. Well, one, one thing I was thinking of, like as you were talking about, you know, put, posting like a big camera, mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm a professional entertainer, and a lot of times after shows, you know, we'll, we'll do our show and we'll pass a hat. Um, is there a way to put up a link to just say, oh, yeah. hey, you know, yeah. this is you can donate event. with PayPal. If you liked it, give us a couple. Yeah, there's, 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 there's definitely the right. passing the hat. Yeah. yeah. A lot of guys like it this week in tech and no agenda. Um, uh, they actually do that, and actually no agenda does very well with that. But they're a very political. Uh, I don't want to say hard left. Actually, they don't like either side. <laughs> but they're very political, and a bunch of people that really believe it. And in their case, a lot of people that really believe, like yes, the government's screwing us over. You know, whether we believe it or not. Uh, but really want to dedicate to them talking about those yes. quote real news, and that's that's their angle on it, and it works really well for them. But of course, they're bigger names. But it's still a potential if you get that audience going. Now, just just two more things before we move on. Uh, one is there's also what I call professional podcasts, like ESPN. You know, every uh, we started it, but they copied. It, right? We started doing podcasts. And right. I started another six. You guys started before me, I think. But uh, then everybody else piled on. So every single entertainment outlet that's out there has a podcast. And it's just a, it's either tailored toward their show or it's a recording of their and show. And unfortunately, depending on what you're doing, that's your competition. And yeah. you do have to compete with that, but you have to deliver it. Being somebody grassroots on the ground level, passionate about something, maybe more than somebody getting paid to talk about it, mm -hmm. that's your edge. And you need to figure out how to help how make your content different than theirs. The only other thing is, like I said before, uh, if you get into a podcast that you really like, visit the website and send leave comments. Mm -hmm. We love comments. You know, do emails. We all have call-in lines where you can call in, and nine times out of ten, probably ten times out of ten, unless it's obscene, we'll put it on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? We'll put you on the show, guaranteed. I've never had a message that I didn't put on my show. And like I said, we love that. So that's just a little help us out thing. Now, if you want to start a podcast, the first thing you need, the most important thing you need, is an idea. Okay? Now, this is where uh, we talked about the niche and, and the... Uh, making sure that you get your niche. This side here is, I'm, I'm speaking about the topic now. Okay, you want to get as many people as you can, you need to pick a topic that has a lot of people that are interested in it. Like these guys have wrestling. Well, there's a ton of people that love wrestling. So they 
have a very wide audience. Uh, politics, sports, food, anything that's like universal. You'll end up probably getting a wider audience. However, there's more competition when you start having general topics that, that everybody's into. How many wrestling shows are there out there? Do you know? Is there hundreds of them? Or? Good ones? Good ones? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Good, good ones, because even the ones on like websites that are bigger than ours have really bad audio quality. Really? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to really cover bad. that, too. A lot, a lot of them will be two, three shows, and they just kind of fizzle out. But yeah, the that's the other thing. Do they have professional ones, like uh, WWE yeah. or other? They have their own video content that they put exclusively on the website, but they're not really podcasting that. So, I mean, all, all of it, the, the, the big feds have done, like, I think TNA has, has, has put like, clips a on a podcast. They have a podcast. They do have a podcast. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Chikara has a podcast. Um, but these are the lower ones. So Chikara is a well. Western PA. Ring of Honor is a smaller yeah. one. at tours, yeah. and they just got a television deal on HDNet a few months ago. So, but, I mean, and that is your competition. But they're going to be geared towards that company and not talking about the broad spectrum of, re of wrestling. You know, mm -hmm. just like an IBM podcast is going to be geared towards IBM versus if I'm talking about computers, you know, I'll have my real opinion about IBM versus Apple or Microsoft and everything. Plus, they're going to stay on point. They don't have the uh, ability, you know, the, the spread off to go and, and have fun. They got to stick right with the right, right. point. Now, on the other hand, my podcast is more narrow. It's narrow and more focused because mine's about Pittsburgh. There's not a whole lot of people from Chicago that are going to listen to it. So my listenership is relatively smaller than what theirs would be. I'm getting ready to top 15,000 downloads, which isn't a lot in the podcasting world, but for me it's fine because the majority of them are from Pittsburgh. Now there's a lot that aren't. There's some from, I got a, I got a bird's eye view calendar hanging in Ireland, in Cork, Ireland, and I got another one hanging in uh, Zambia from people that have gone out and uh, got on iTunes, searched Pittsburgh, and now they're, they listen and to my show. And that's where, as us, a lot of big contributors for, to our, our, uh, our show. We actually have, have a fan that's become a friend up in the Bronx. We've had someone that visited us from London. We have uh, a kid from Texas that's helping us out. Um, so we, it's not, ours isn't regional specific. But one thing to consider when you're looking at the narrow audience is uh, when you do get to that point when you have a little bit of critical mass, uh, one, when you talk about success, that number is not going to be, at, your successful number is not going to be as big as the broader audience, of course. But when you take that to an advertiser, as specifically looking towards, you know, comic book fans, specifically looking towards technical fans, uh, you know, some, you, I mean, something in Pittsburgh or the Steelers or something, um, they're going to be, they're, they're not going to be as worried about the tighter number, but people that are already engaged in that topic, so they're already looking for their product. And don't do a, a, a podcast on Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, you can if you want, but there's a ton of them. I'll do it if you love it. I mean, that's true. That's true. Do something that's true. Love it. I shouldn't say that, but I'm, I should say the market is saturated. Yeah. They put it that way. And don't do one on the Pirates, because it's really looks like And again, you're going to get a narrow audience on that end, uh, get your niche, and uh, either way, you can hit it big. I mean, either way. Uh, what are some of the subjects that you guys are thinking about doing podcasts on? We heard so we got to think about it, yeah. So I'm going to do, uh, I write, so I'm going to actually podcast my writing. As mm -hmm. as, uh, Outstanding. Yes. Anybody else? I'm uh, working on one. I want to say that what you just said got the wheels turning. Well, thank what you. I do at Sort of Odd is I work with judgments, resolving them. Mm -hmm. And what I hear from this, uh, right now the hot topic for people are, Foreclosures, short sales, leading to deficiency judgments, taking you into bankruptcy, where then I get a chance to do the niche thing that I do, starting with a big funnel up front. And I thank you. Oh, you're quite welcome, sir. Who's your idea? Listen to the show. <laughs> well, I, have a, I have a theatrical Middle Eastern dance company that I started up last year. And I'm thinking about doing a podcast with um, Jewish Jews and Nights storytelling. It's kind of a, a companion to the company, kind of mm -hmm. the company. And, and that's another thing, is, is the podcasting. Is anybody looking at podcasting related to a product story out there or the company? And there's a lot of that. Uh, a perfect example is Will It Blend? Look it up. Uh, <laughs> some people know it. <laughs> uh, it just, that, just that kind of additional information to keep people engaged in your company. But it, I think there's going to be a little bit more about that. So yeah, yeah in business, a couple, so couple, couple, I think we need to get to the technical stuff. Uh, anybody else going to do? Let's hear your ideas. 
Um, there's actually one that's already happened. It's a foreign language, modern language association that does um, a podcast with students in different grade levels about why should they take, uh, why are foreign languages important. And so I'm doing an EDTT grant, um, which right. is a federal grant putting technology into classrooms. And so we're doing, I'm trying to learn it so that I can make the kids, make the kids do a podcast about that and do video and then podcast it. Well, I, I will say on, on Lipson, <laughs> Lipson is a host that I use. And they're pretty big and they're, they're uh, what corporate, their headquarters is right here in Pittsburgh. And if you look on the top podcast, and they have a lot of them, how to speak Italian, all the ang all the language ones are always at the top. Mm -hmm. So there's people listening to that stuff, guaranteed. And who was it? Uh, Libsyn, Liberated Syndication. Hold that with my That's right, I do have it. Anybody else want to share your, yes sir? Well, I edit and write uh, uh, adventure travel and tourism blogs. And uh, is what my company does. We use social media strategy for adventure travel companies, and we're looking at uh, trying to start podcasting for Great. some of our. You clients. should check out uh, in the uh, sponsor lounge. You should check out uh, Bethany in there. She might be able to. She does the same thing for a different company. I don't know about the podcasting, but the social media part of it. Right. Right. Yeah. We're looking specifically to start. You know. They got to be totally committed. It's hard to get them totally committed right. to doing social media in the first place, but True. Uh, Just catch it up. Right, right. Uh, but somebody that that might be a good fit for podcasting, we'd like to you know, be able to set that up for them. Great. Anybody else? Is an educational podcast on troubleshooting mobile. Good deal. Lots of tech ones out there. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a big one. Well, I have the one that I do for my work. I'm a social worker, and we're thinking. Uh, in human services about trying to do something <coughs> to educate the public about homelessness, adults with mental illness, and mm -hmm. using the residents to come on and talk themselves. And we kind of structure it, but make it be driven by what's actually happening right. in life. I don't really see that happening. I've been look, looking around for something like that in Pittsburgh, and I have, it's happening in New York, in D.C. I'll talk to Bill Peduto. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and actually, uh, related to that, uh, one of the other things I do, I do uh, podcasts for Penn Future. Uh, which is a lot of the you know, people out there, I'm pretty much excited what they, what they give me, but um, but it's a lot of that kind of getting the information out about issues and everything. So. Okay, so I guess after the ideas and all that, we've got to start talking about equipment a little bit. Yeah, yeah these are our examples of what we have with. This is uh, studio number one, my studio number one. <coughs> uh, you only see it one spot there, but it's... Uh, I, I want to make clear, like, I know, I know especially when I was starting, this can probably look intimidating, something like this, with all the numbers. Um, you don't need this to start. And, and, and a point on that is if you see this recorder right here on the desk, that's the show that's being recorded right now. So you don't need all this. Mm -hmm. This is just an enhancement. You can start on that. When we started, oh, I was already doing a, a streaming radio on, on uh, shout, Shoutcast yeah, 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 yeah. Um, for a couple years for, for a site, westernpajellas.com, that I've run for eight years now. Um, and that's kind of what evolved into this. We had the cheapest PC mics. <laughs> they listen to our, all of our shows are up there. Go to show one and two, or please don't. Um, <laughs> and you'll hear that from anybody that's been doing this for a long time. Don't listen to our first fifty shows, please. <laughs> but um, it was it was a, a ten dollar PC mic. We're like, well, we all kind of crowd around it. Uh, mm -hmm. Eventually, we got a couple of them. We got two of them. Then we got four people on the that show. Was, that was the height, the height of luxury. We got two I had it was amazing. the most interesting menagerie of, <laughs> of splitter cables coming out of the back of my computer just from the sound card to, to, from headphone jacks. And uh, we'll see a little bit of what we've gone through, through since. Hey, Pop. Sorry. Can you want to hold up that recorder so people in the back can Sure. Or just tell us what you're using. It's got right here. What, yeah, what is this? Is it oh, Olympus? You have to read it over. It's an Olympus. It's, it's not the cheapest model, but it's not the most expensive. You can get them to where they're this big and have two big mics um, coming out of them. The other thing asked is, should I drink that, guys, about what they use? Yeah, uh, they have they, a nice one. It's a little higher, but it's really nice. Really good quality. So, so is that like a 50 $70? That's about a $75. $75. Yeah, I think because when I got the $20 one, I wrecked like three shows. It was yeah, too hard and, to edit the I've noise done, out. If you have like one this, of these, this noise. What is that? 
If you have an iPhone, I have a 99 cent app that I've recorded. I recorded the Pick Girl podcast. You've heard that on the on podcast Pittsburgh. Oh. Uh, I got a liner from Kevin Eastman, the creator of Ninja Turtles, at a Comic Con for our show. <laughs> it's been really handy. Just been like, let's get this interview now. You know, it, and and it's it's really usable. It's really good with with uh, sound uh, crap room noise. And you know, if you have a device like that, uh, even if you probably have an Android device or, or BlackBerry, there's probably something equivalent on there. What's that? Uh, it's just recorder. Okay. The digital recorder. It, it, when I got it, was 99 cents and maybe two now, but they, they have a lot of really cool functions. It records an AIFF if you're familiar with that, um, and uh, and you can you can email it to yourself and get it, grab it over Wi-Fi. It's pretty cool. Just yeah. What was the name of the app again? Recorder. Just record, man. That's it. <laughs> it was probably the first recorder app they had on there, so about a year ago. Now this station here, this is uh, my station as it is now. It's a 12 channel Xenix 1222FX mixer. I have four MXL microphone B36 microphones, like you see there. Uh, I have uh, one additional condenser mic. Mic stands for all of them. There's five panelist stations with <coughs> headphones and a laptop, but Again, it doesn't have to be that way. This is studio number two in LSA Anaconda in Iraq. I told you before I took the show with me. Uh, and that's basically one microphone. You can't really see it, but it's one little preamp, a $29.95 preamp about that big. I like the sound of tube, tube sounding audio, you know, deep. And uh, that preamp helps do that. And then I... Uh, Studio number two is a hardened bunker, a laptop, a tube MP, one microphone, <laughs> uploaded directly via satellite connection to an Italian server uh, that would send it to Libsyn, but it took me up to eight hours to send a show. It was tough to do, but I was dedicated. Uh, sometimes it would take ten tries. It would start uploading, and two hours in, it would lose the connection, and uh, that was frustrating, but I had to get the show to you. Right. And then, Studio 2A, I did one show in my office. You know, I didn't see these in the slide. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I know our show's violent. But <laughs> I'm just there to show you it's real. You can see my buddy's leg right there, the one on the right. And that was just one that we did in the office. I think the name of that one was Corn Fed Iowa Girls. It's just station security. <laughs> We also, now this is the bare bones setup. <laughs> this is out in the field, out in the land navigation area in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Yeah. And that show's done just with the laptop, with the built-in microphone. There's, I think there's two shows like that. Now, the one of the downsides to that is uh, for that studio, I needed a laptop using battery power, two master sergeants, and a Humvee. <laughs> so that's how we got that show. Now. Like we said, you can go, the, the spectrum is from nearly nothing to extravagant. Yes. You can do whatever you want. Everybody. There's a lot of experimentation. There is. We've, we've gone equipment in and out that we haven't used. A lot of second hand. Uh, I'll, we'll show you that in a second. Now, I will say, and, and Sword touched on it earlier, uh, if you do this, if you use a laptop, you're going to hear the cooling fan every time it cycles. Mm -hmm. You know, if you use cheap mics, things, gonna, things are going to crackle and pop and stuff like that. And the thing is, is it, it's a potential show record. If you have the content that people want, they'll stick with you. Especially for an audio podcast, if you're doing video where audio is really important, uh, it, you really need to listen to, to it and say, you know, it, it doesn't have to be perfect audio, obviously. We're not all audio engineers. Right. I'm certainly not. Um, even my day, day job, I still screw it up and I do video for a living. Um, <laughs> But uh, it, it just needs to be kind of at a tolerable level, and that's kind of to your own judgment. And we're, there's some ways you can enhance that, yes, sir. One of the things that I've noticed with a number of podcasts is oftentimes the level, their audio level, yes, where your average level is here, loud is here, they're down here. So if you try to hear yeah. that without a, a big amp or reprocessing, it's like you're right. Um, yeah, it's hard to listen to some of them in the car. It's sort of like almost like why did they bother? Yeah, yeah, and again, not knowing it or not knowing to go back and check it. Like we could do a two-hour show for us and Man show, uh, and so we don't have time to go through that. That would like I know somebody else that does a two to three-hour show, like every Friday night, uh, uh, running the awful show. And uh, from what I understand, they're up until four in the morning editing that thing. Yeah. It sounds great, but is, is there any cheap, easy? 
software that you can say, okay, this is an audio feed, and I want you to adjust the amplitude levels so on that the they're fly, over half a minute, you know. On the fly, day. not that I'm aware of, nothing I use. I mean, after you prepare the thing and say, but, okay, now redo it. Yeah, afterwards, you can take it in something like an Adobe Audition Soundtrack Pro. There's a free one called Audacity yeah. that's out there okay. that does most of those functions. Um, we'll build learning curve. It's not easy to use as the rest, but it's free, and that's the important part. <laughs> you can tell you okay, that. It, it'll be able. To, it should have the function to 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 do a hard limiting or uh, or normalizing, uh, which should level all that stuff out. I run a hard limiting on my entire show to to push everything at all levels up. Because I know we, we put out ones in the past that were a little up and down. We'll play music and it's way higher than what we were talking at because I'm, I'm you know, adjusting the knobs live and trying to adjust what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing in the waves as they record the computer. So, but you know, it depends also how much time. We have, my workflow is that we produce a live show. We actually have quite a complicated setup we want to because <laughs> we insist on doing things live and raw. <laughs> and and it's, the, it's, it's we do it and we're done by 10, 10.30, it depends on how crazy we got with conversation. And I'm up until one in the morning, Tuesday night with work the next day, trying to clean this thing up. So on my, on my you know, little laptop. So and right. it just depends on how much time you want to spend with it and, and learning the tools and, and experiment with it. You're not gonna get the first time, that's okay. And you gotta keep in mind too. Now, I listen to my podcast, all the podcasts I listen to through speakers. Mm -hmm. All right, a lot of people listen to it through headphones, earbuds. Mm -hmm. So when you're editing your show, make sure that you listen to it with, I, I would say more people listen with earbuds than do through speakers. So you're gonna wanna see how it sounds. I, now what I do, I do my show late at night. And the next day or the day after, I spend, I listen to my show at least two times. I listen to it once and I go through and I take show notes and I edit things. But then after I'm done with that two, three hour process, I go through and listen to it all again, just so I can see what the whole thing sounds like before I put it out there. I just took a look and I see Audacity, the current version, Mac, Windows, yes. and Yes, I, I have it on Linux machines, which are right there. Um, <laughs> this is our, it's a little darker than I had expected. Uh, maybe I'll put take this again. Um, this is an amassing of years of collection of hardware and work and experimentation. Uh, um, I'm running four or five computers when we do a live show. Yes, Just he is. Because I'm doing so much. <laughs> uh, right there is a, a little four channel board. It's a uh, Behringer. Behringer is a great brand, high quality, low cost, really hard to spell. Uh, <laughs> but I, it's a uh, Behringer Euro track. It's a four channel. I'm looking to upgrade to maybe an eight channel so I can input more stuff, have separate mics for everything. There's my MXL microphone that I got for 80 bucks a few years ago when I decided to try to get into rap music. Um, <laughs> and it really, this thing I just set in there, turn up the, <laughs> turn up the, uh, the uh, uh, sensitivity on it, and it pretty much picks up the entire room. There's a crappy one I'm experimenting there since I'm facing the other way, looking all this crap. <laughs> um, now those microphones take phantom power, right? That phantom, that's, that's my only phantom power one, and, and that's that's important thing. Very, you know, technical audio thing. You don't have to start with it again. You can learn it as you go. Talk to an audio expert. <laughs> um, I'm right for this. We run UStream Live as well as TalkShoe, which is our host. Um, yeah, cameras up there. Uh, webcam's fine, which we have one of those too that we experiment with. But, but this is my eight millimeter camera that's filming my wife's session in the next room. Uh, the reason I use that is a great firewire. Uh, and great quality, but that's a whole video podcast thing. We'll give them that some other time. Um, and, and it looks like that. That's yeah, and this is this is what you see. That's the guest. This area. is the less ugly area. Uh, there's, there's Hutch. I was on a few weeks ago. Uh, this is when the ladies took over. Um, this is this is this is. That's the wrestling we're mayhem show. Couch. So yeah. so yeah. we don't have guns, but we have a monkey. So yeah, we do. Heart check. <laughs> so. Um, I haven't heard the name jumping Johnny DePazio so many times in my life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, you listen to the last one? <laughs> okay, here we go. This is, uh, basically we covered most of this already. The only thing different is, should I drink that started with a webcam? They got, they hit half a million yesterday. And they've, they've come up through the years, like I, I've seen video where it's just their, their board on a table and them and, and really good mics. 
And uh, can anybody can talk about the editing software before this is a must? I mean, it's not a must, but it's something that'll enhance your. You got to do something with it. Yeah. Technically, what you can do, we'll talk a little bit about hosting. We use TalkShoot. These guys are from Pittsburgh. They're based up in Wexford. They might have moved. I can't recall. I met these guys at Pocket One. They were great guys. I started using their service. I we were using SwitchPod, and uh, and we weren't happy with them for one reason or another. And uh, we went to them, they have free hosting, and if you wanted to, you can pick up this phone, call your account, and I could do a podcast and record it straight to their server right now. That is the easiest way for you to start a podcast, to now, be honest. I will say one thing that got me at the beginning, don't be intimidated by the editing software. Mm -hmm. Keep going after it, find like a couple of different functions that you can do. I'm still learning three years later on how different things in Audition work. Exactly. I, mean, I still am, and I do this professionally. There's something else with uh, talk shoe, and that's talk like Maxwell Smart into your shoe. Talk shoe is that people can hear you live on their telephone. All they yeah. have to do is call yeah. the local yeah. number, and talk shoe actually makes money on that call. And they put, and they, and they can work with. Uh, they actually, if you want to have a call-in show, this is a great example to do it really low cost and easy because it's already set up for you. They have their application comes up. Uh, we use we use Skype uh, because. What's going on here? Oh, <laughs> uh, we, we use Skype because we like the quality and, and of it better, but, but again, for ease of use and getting into it, TalkShoe is really good for that and I recommend it. There's another thing of TalkShoe, and there's a program actually on now, you might want to listen to you some Friday Saturday, called the American Entrepreneur, uh, is that that radio program is also broadcast through TalkShoe, and sort of the, uh, the committed uh, entrepreneurs tend to gather on talk show, there's a lot of side chatter, and you'll see how that can feed the host. So you get the messages you can see. Um, yeah, actually, uh, I'll leave a report uh, uh, with uh, This Week in Tech. Uh, I, think they did, I think it was Net at Night or something. Um, they actually got into talk show and, and, and play with it. And you know, of course, he has a big, way bigger audience than anybody here because he's been on TV and everything. Uh, but at the end, they would turn on everybody that was called in and to say hi. Yeah, we've got to wrap this up yeah, and let you session yeah. go. The other thing you got to do is get your content to the masses, and that's your different uh, hosts, Libsyn, TalkShoe, Google them, and you know, whatever you'll find. One thing, and we'll go back to your question earlier about analytics and, and knowing how, how, you know, how many people. Yeah, they all have them built in. One disadvantage of TalkShoe is literally all I have is this means many people listen to or, or downloaded your podcast, which is a big problem. We're, now we're looking for advertisers to say this is how many people are really looking through these methods. Uh, now, Libsyn, you say you have a lot more. And I have an external Google Analytics. It, it act, okay, you do, and you also have that. Uh, Google Analytics is great for attaching to your site. Do they have a podcast aspect? Uh, yeah. yeah, they do. Yeah. I just learned something I'm going to be applying that this week. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, they're very in depth. And it's great to be breaking down to see how many people are looking on your iTunes and what, what, they're, their what they're searching for to get to your show. Exactly. It gives you an idea how to angle people into what you're doing. Um, well, I'm not on Blueberry, who, who I think is a sponsor this year, is another one to look into. I'm actually looking into that for some video projects for the future. <coughs> Okay, now getting your content to the syndicator, you need to, like I said, with the direct transfer, that takes a long time. You want to get a... You're talking about like the upload, upload, upload through the, the website. File, yeah. That's what TalkShoe does. I think they didn't have an FTP option, but I just upload through the website. And that's also, you need to consider file size and how you can press, but right. that's kind of a two-on-one. Because if you pay for it, there's places where you can do it free. Mm -hmm. Libsyn cost me $12 a month for mm -hmm. 250 megabytes. So you want to make sure that you have you know, your file sizes, you're controlling it, that it's what you want it to be. My show's 50 to 70 megabytes. So yeah, shop around all those hosts, see what best fits you uh, and the direction you want to take, because unfortunately, like like I know, we have changed our direction on the show, what we want to accomplish a couple of times. That's how we kind of jump in. Am I right on your? Yes. Okay, those are our shows. Oh, I forgot my slashes, but that's oh, there were slashes in there. Well, there's cards up here, too. And I have some, too. Uh, I guess right now we'll entertain any of your questions. Yeah, any last one. Um, back to the eggs editing software. Yeah. Uh, what about EPD programs like Acidware and things? I'm really not familiar uh, with it. I've used Acid for recording music. Um, it's big, really, these are kind of more basic functions you need, um, unless you work on a lot of effects into the show. 
Um, but it'll get, if you just need to clip up the show, clip out mistakes and clean it up a little, it's got, you know, I don't even know how many filters. I think it'll be adequate if you have that available. I don't know about like the Acid Express or anything. Uh, not, you know, I don't know if they have enough. I don't know if they would have those options to clean the audio as well. So, real quick, if you guys actually want to see a podcast in me, um, Wrestling Mayhem Show does a new stream of their show on Tuesdays while they're recording it. Yes, that's it's right. really good to watch and see how they interact, how they interact with guests, a lot of uh, watch on the show. Yeah, we, and that's one big thing is we, a lot of times, like local wrestlers, we have wrestlers in the studios and they get a little crazy and sometimes lose their pants. <laughs> is wrestling real? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Everybody else got in? Yes. Yeah, just out of curiosity on equipment, um, your your mixer and your mics, are those specifically for radio? No. Or is it the same thing no. you use in a theater show? Same thing that... Okay. So it's an audition. It's a general recording. Musicians friend. Sounds exactly. is another one. Uh, they have great prices. Music one, two. Oh, stuff from pianos and stuff. Yeah, some stuff. Go down to Guitar Center and, and you know, tell them what you're trying to do. They'll help you out. They're usually pretty good. The one out wrong, they're really good. The music one, two, three is good. That's so right. Like a special connector or something to get it to? Uh, you need it. You need it. Hey, my hope's on my USB. Yeah. The headphones yeah. yeah. uh, yeah. 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 have. Go to Radio Session. You need an adaptive course. Please take our uh, yeah. 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 Ye